Hi there, Loy Mosquito. Speaking to you from LoyMosquito.com. Who's Loy Mosquito and Think Personal Branding? Right now, the time is 2.37, okay? I didn't plan to actually put up this video, but I actually happened to get a call. Okay, I got a very unexpected call from a Emirati local, okay? How I know he is legit? Because his number, his cell phone number, had, you know, the same digits, and you cannot get a number with the same day i will not say whether it's itasala or do but it had the same digits same digits so i knew he was a very very powerful local he came on video he showed me his face to prove it to me that it is legit and i was at first i was skeptical to be honest with you i was a little scared because a very powerful guy has this number which i know might be costing hundreds of thousands of dollars and then he spoke to me but to my surprise he gave me a message which really blew my mind and that is why I'm going to share this video with you. You'll be shocked. You will be shocked with the information that I'm going to share with you in this video. Uh, so in this video, what I've decided is all the emails, I received around 312 uh, messages and emails, quite a lot of stuff. I was busy editing, editing, editing. And uh, I thought I would put the video tomorrow, but I've decided I'm going to put the video today, especially after this call. Okay, so in a summary, what I'm going to share with you, first, I'll just share with you the basic uh, uh, overall headlines. Then I'm going to share with you what one business owner from uh, Jumeirah Lake Towers shared with me. I'll share with you what one guy who has been doing illegal activities in Dubai told me. Third one is uh, uh, I got some information about Damas jewelry. I got some information about Itisalad. Um, was I right or was I wrong? I'm going to tell you, tell you from a guy who got a job in Itisalad. He just got a job in Itisalad and he shared with me, corrected me where I was wrong. So I'll tell you in this video. Uh, there is information about the banking industry plus with links which I'll be sharing with you. I have information on Samsung and very shocking one is the last two which I'm going to share with you as a climax. It is going to be what UAE government has agreed with Interpol for people who have taken credit cards and loans. This will shock you and it will make you very very scared. Okay, I know this because I got two calls which uh, told me that they are being hunted and last what the Marathi local told me so I'm going to share all this information in this video okay so let's quickly move on first is the general headlines uh, one is out of the 312 emails and messages and everything that I received 67 people sent me their resumes asking me to help them get jobs which I've told you again and again I offer services where I can rebrand your resume teach you the loopholes of the system coach you how to get jobs if I feel you're the right guy I may may introduce you to my contact but this is for a fee because I'm a professional I don't earn a salary so I'm not going to just please help me my mother's sake father's sake I, I'm sorry you have problems even I have problems when you are earning very big salaries you didn't think of me so today when you're going through trouble you know you need to pay me for my services even if you go for uh, travel by airplane even if you go to a restaurant even if wherever you go you have to pay money you can't go to a Rolls Royce showroom and say I have the budget for a Toyota and I want to buy a Rolls Royce so in the same way if you want my services you have to pay my details are put down in the description box below so please don't ask me to help you for free I don't like embarrassing people now next one is uh, for those of you who are my clients and searching for jobs and watching my videos um, you know there's been no confirmation why because it's a new year everyone's partying and you know everything is closed down um, four people send me contributions. I want to say thank you. The contributions were not big. I'll tell you the amounts were, I'll not give their names, but the amounts were one guy said one dollar. He's from India. He's a student. He sent me one dollar. So no problem. I accept it. Another one sent me five, one sent me 15, one sent me 57. Okay. So I want to say thank you very much. And a gentleman from United States, Robbie, Robbie Thomas, a good friend of mine. He sent me another contribution, which I didn't expect. Very generous guy, great human being. He is the epitome of what a Christian should be. Thank you so very much. Okay, then um, I got, um, uh, what do you say? I got, uh, in my emails, I got four business proposals. If I was interested in partnership, very flattering, but I'm not interested to become a partner with any particular company, irrespective how you know hyped up it is. I got two sponsorship requests. 
uh, where um, one guy wants me to introduce all my contacts. He wants my contacts list and he'll pay me money. Okay, the amount is a hundred thousand. Uh, you know, I'm not supposed to say, but anyway, I won't give you his name. 100,000 dirhams he's willing to pay me if I give him my entire contact list. I'm sorry, I can't sell my contact list. Uh, it doesn't work that way. And he told me he'll also pay me commission on what my contacts buy. So it doesn't work out. The other guy is doing a shady business, which I don't want to talk about. And he wants me to manipulate the SEO, the Google rankings, give him, uh, you know, recommendations and it doesn't work that way. I'm sorry. The money was good. Uh, not as much as a hundred thousand guy. He said he would give me every month a, a sizable contribution, but you know, it just doesn't work with me. I respectfully told him no. Two guys want to meet, <laughs> meet me in Thailand. They are actually flying out in January. I'm sorry. I do not meet people and you're coming to Bangkok. I stay in Samui. There's a massive difference. Okay. I got three calls, three calls from three guys who called me to tell me, that they will fuck my wife, that they'll kill my family, that one of them even said he will kill my baby, okay? And other one called me just to give me bad words. I think he was a little drunk. Um, three calls from three different countries. I don't know, maybe they're playing with the number because it showed uh, different countries. I don't want to take the country's names, but I found out that you can buy a SIM card of another country and divert calls, okay? I also got a call from a very old friend who has very strong connections with the CID, uh, with the, the police. I can't believe he called me. <laughs> At first he called me, do you want, you know, you, uh, he, he started off the call by saying, you fucker, I'm going to take you to the CID. <laughs> so I was like half asleep. I was like, what? You know? So I was like, who is this? You know? And then he realized I was half asleep. He, then he told me his name. He's a very good friend of mine. He's very well connected, very powerful. He is, he is, he, you know, he is connected with the CID, with the with the top guys in Dubai police. And he called me and said, what the fuck are you doing? You know, I'm going to catch you and take you to jail. So I told him, you know, I'm just putting the normal content. He said, as long as you do not insult the ruler, as long as you do not insult, um, you know, the religion and put up videos, he's saying you're free to speak. And he was really courteous and really nice. I was so happy to speak to him. And he told me a lot of guys come in the gym and they share my videos. So I'm very flattered. It's nice to meet an old friend. Uh, now, the uh, another shocker that I got is after I put up that video about all the people hating me, you know, I read the hateful messages. You would not believe the number of Pakistanis, the number of Muslims, the number of even Emirati locals. I didn't expect this. Even women who are who are Muslim. They call, they send me messages, private messages. They even, you can read the comments below. Some of them even called me to say, I'm sorry. In fact, I will share with you what the Emirati locals said to me. And I am really touched. I'm really touched with those Pakistanis, those Muslims, those people who follow Islam. You know, this is the true spirit of Islam. This is what Islam is all about. It is, you, even if someone insults you, even if someone has a different opinion against you, even if someone doesn't believe in your religion, even if someone is tattooed or whatever, they don't hate you. They show the love that is there in a, in any religion. In, and, you know, these Pakistanis, some of them, they, they were so humble. They said, I'm Pakistani, I'm Muslim, I'm ashamed, brother, I'm really ashamed. Please accept my apologies. To all those Pakistanis, to all those uh, Muslims, to all those Arabs, to all those Emiratis, I give you my love and my respect. Thank you so very much for, you know, making me believe once again that there are good people. And let me tell you this, my all my mentors, most of them were Muslim Arab Emiratis. OK, uh, when I was in trouble, only one Christian, one Christian Orthodox helped me in uh, 2011 when I went through a crisis and the rest were all Muslims, Indian Muslims, Pakistani Muslims. Ever. I, I'll tell you. You know, the media shows only the rednecks and the, the violence that Islam shows. Yes, there are a lot of uh, Muslim, you know, uh, people who follow Islam who are crazy. But the day to day people are not. The day to day people are normal and nice. Yes, they do want Islam to spread. They do want uh, their religion to, you know, be all over the world. But they are normal people. They are not bad. They are not violent. And, you know, the, the real Pakistani Muslims, the friends that I've had, they're very nice people. So thank you so very much for, you know, making me believe once again that there are these good people out there. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad. 
I want to give you all my love and respect. Thank you so very much. Now let's move on to the um, the actual news, the news of uh, what I got from Dubai UAE. Okay, um, this guy is a business owner. He is a business owner in Jumeirah Lake Towers. He said that he paid a huge key money to get this uh, to get this restaurant uh, in JLT, and now his expenses alone, his expenses alone are twenty seven thousand dirhams. Um, just uh, rent, telephone, diva, and salaries. Twenty-seven thousand dirhams. Took a small little restaurant, and uh, he's paying twenty-seven thousand dirhams, but he's making only five thousand dirhams per month. And he's saying, "Lloyd, the renewal is due. I do not know what to do." Uh, see, the thing is, you know, you you fall for the hype. You pay key money. I'm sure he must have paid at least two hundred thousand dirhams to get key money just to get that location. Now he's not making any money. Now, if you have loans, if you have credit cards, if you have debtors, you're in serious problem. I'll tell you that. And business is bad. Let's be honest. Business is bad. Oh, by the way, someone asked me, what is my opinion about people who have taken, spent 2000 dirhams to book a nice little place? Uh, I, I, I think one of the coffee shops or whatever in Burj Khalifa to watch the fireworks. You know, if you have the money, you can spend on whatever you like. You can spend it on um, uh, travel. You can spend it on girls. You can spend it on whores. You can spend it on drugs. It's your money. You know, you can spend. So there are a lot of people who are rich, who have nothing to do, who love to see firecrackers, which I never understood what's so great about it. And they don't mind spending 2000 dirhams just to sit and watch. So it's your money. I think it's fair enough. I don't have any problem. It's like if you're a billionaire and you're spending money splurging for parties and everything else. However, what I'm against is if you spend on a credit card or a loan and you can't afford it, but you're trying to show off. That's the only thing. Okay, the next one is uh, the illegal thing that this guy is doing. This particular guy booked a call, a session with me, paid $157, wanted my advice. Why? Because he's doing something illegal and he wanted to know how to succeed illegally. What is he doing? He has been floating around 15, one five, I'm not exaggerating, 15 different resumes. He sent me all the resumes and he's applying for 15 <laughs> different jobs. What are you doing? He's applying for 15 different positions, 15 different jobs. He's not got a job. He spammed, I wouldn't say email, spammed 7,000 companies in the UAE. And he even paid a guy on Fiverr. He paid around five hundred dollars to send a hundred thousand companies all over the Middle East his CV, and he has not yet got a response. And uh, now, and he told me that he even got his uh, resume done by paying an agency for eight hundred dirhams. I mean, ha listen, please stop. The reason I'm 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 making this public, okay, is without sharing his name, of course, is. Do not think companies are dumb. Do not think HR people are dumb. Do not think the companies do not have system. If you start spamming, it is the email servers. They have softwares that can detect, detect you spamming everyone. And obviously, they're going to block you. And if you get blocked once, this your email address or your IP address, you cannot send the same email again. Please stop doing this. Please stop spamming other people. Emailing you know, just for vacancies doesn't work anymore. Copy pasting stuff from the internet doesn't work. I can make out if a CV is copy pasted in seconds. I can make out if a CV is good or not in seconds. I've got even people from IIT, IIMs who are sending me their CVs, even from Harvard who have sent me their CVs. I have been in this business for 11 years. You may not believe me, I don't fucking care, but I've been in this business for 11 years. I've studied these CVs. Uh, this is my art. It's my bread and butter. So if I don't try to be the best at it, I can't survive. So I know how to make a CV without copy pasting. And that's how I rebrand. It's branding. It's like you stand out from the rest of the crowd, but emailing and spamming doesn't work. Please stop it. And you paying these agencies 800 dirhams or 1300 or whatever, the guy who takes your CV, takes your money is a guy who gets paid only 2000 dirhams. He puts your data into a software they just print out with all the data that there is. It just prints out and they give it back to you. You can get on Fiverr for $5. For $5, they'll make a CV, but you're not going to get a job. Please try to understand. If you are ready to spend almost 100000 on your wedding, on your fucking wedding card, you'll spend one year deciding the font, the design, the layout, the words, just for a fucking wedding card. How much more should you spend on your fucking resume, man? Your resume is your identity. Is It's... 
the way that you'll get employed, the way that you'll change your life. What are you doing? Why are you being stingy? I got a guy who who is earning like 40, 50,000 dirhams a month. He said, can you, can you get me a job? I'll pay you 100 dirhams. I was like, what is 100 dirhams? A fucking tip? What do I look like a fucking dog to you? He wants half a million, half a million, 600,000 dirhams salary per year, annually, 600,000. And he's ready to give me 100 bucks to guarantee him a job. And then there are idiots who have been trying to get a job for one year, two years. They're not getting a job, but they're still stingy about paying money to get a proper resume done. You'll never succeed, man. That's a fact. If, if you're not succeeded before, you're not going to succeed. Now, it's like they say, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. It's like a fly going through a window pane, ting, 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 and expecting the window will break. No, your head will break. Okay. So the next one is about Damas jewelry. Uh, Damas, I, I'm, I'm pretty surprised that Damas is still existing. Once upon a time, I remember, uh, I think 10, 15 years ago, uh, Damas jewelry, they had uh, used Cindy Crawford as uh, the brand ambassador. They were like really big. Uh, the Abdullah brothers, as far as I remember, but it seems after they sold it to the Qatari company Al Manani, Manai, Manai, the downfall started. Um, they closed before they had 300 branches. I'm sure there must have been more, but it seems they had 300 branches. Now they're reducing it to 150. That is half and around 500 employees have been terminated. So I'm pretty surprised Damas Jewelry is still there. I don't know. Is it supposed to be there? It, I, I thought they closed down. So it seems they are also, um, you know, uh, cutting down, obviously, because you have so many Indian brands, which are so much more cheaper. Okay, now comes the Iti Salad news. Um, you know, last time when I said Ethis Salah, they terminated so many number of people. Then I got so many messages from people. I'm working for Ethis Salah. Fuck you. You know, we, are, we have employed 800 people or 600 people. You're giving the wrong news. So this guy got a job in Ethis Salah through one of the agencies. And he wrote to me, he said, Loy, the people who have written down to you that uh, Ethis Salah is hiring, they are right, but they are not telling you the complete truth. Okay. Ethis Salah is hiring not directly through Ithis Salad on their visa, but through agencies, there are two agencies. One is Imasco and one is Reach. Okay, Imasco and Reach. So you can now tell me if I'm saying wrong or right. It seems Inasco, uh, which was known as Imasco before, has changed its name to First Select. Why? Uh, they are also changing their name, license, location, and shut down their office in Ajwan and opening it in Karama, Dubai. Why is a big question. Because the number of complaints registered in Ministry of Labor uh, the delay of their salaries, the huge payment gap in salary payments and incentives, the wrong information that they give people and mislead uh, people for joining. And uh, there's a massive difference between the benefits a permanent staff of Ithis Salah gets, which is obvious, and they get. And most of them are overworked. They are made to work very hard and they're given very stringent targets. It seems the second company is reached. So what he has told me is, Lloyd, don't let people misguide you by saying they are employing people in Ithis Salah. They are employing people in Imasco and Reach uh, and people are not giving you the right information. So finally, I've given you the right information. Tell me if I'm right or wrong. OK, now comes the central bank. Um, it seems the job growth in UAE. As for the central bank, I got in touch with somebody from the central bank, which he said it is slow. He confirmed what I said. The banking industry is slow. He said uh, the reason being is the property prices, the money market, the stock market, everything is going haywire. And um, he also shared with me a link that is in Gulf Business. Uh, it's not a very new article, but in that article, there's this paragraph that really stood out. And in the paragraph, it says in an effort to bolster white collar numbers, the UAE government last week announced a scheme to offer long term visas to rich property investors, senior scientists and entrepreneurs. But eligibility for these visas is tightly restricted as they do not offer a path to stability and UAE citizenships. Uh, citizenship. So analysts said that the scheme will do little or no change uh, to change employment or the real estate market trends. So this is an um, article that is shared to me by someone who is part of the central government. Uh, sorry, central bank. OK, now uh, I got a very senior guy who has been in the construction industry. He has a lot of connections and contacts in Choitram and other banks. He just told me, uh, he sent me these three bits. He said DIB and Noor Bank is merging. Uh, 
but I will tell you the information given by the Marathi later on. Choitram has sold its supermarkets and it's bought over by Spinney's. And the construction equipment, he said, on an average, when I take the last five years, this year we have made only 10%, 5 to 10% of what sales we used to make before. And he's saying plenty of people are losing their jobs. Okay, now the really big news, the very, very big news that I have to share with you. Uh, Qatar, um, Qatar and UAE, this is as per this news article, Qatar and UAE has been using Interpol to hunt bank defaulters for loans, credit cards, auto loans, whatever, mortgage loans. So if you have taken a loan, a credit card or whatever, and you have run away, you are going to be hunted by Interpol if you are anywhere in the Middle East. Okay, many people had sent me this message before. Lloyd, you think we are going to be in trouble if I have a credit card loan? Now I'm giving you information that is given to me by a very reliable source. He doesn't want me to mention anything about him. Okay. Uh, he has sent me a link from mynewsdesk.com uh, slash UK. Uh, so what he said is the UK and uh, sorry, UAE and Qatar have are paying Interpol almost $50 million annually for their services to make sure that anyone who violates um, uh, UAE or Qatar, it seems their rules, uh, it can be from free speech, trying to cause trouble, uh, credit card loans, especially financial, that is credit card loans, mortgage, whatever. If you run away, you will be caught and uh, they have an extradition that you'll be sent back. But obviously now Qatar and uh, UAE, because they are broken up, so they will not exchange. But it seems if you are caught, you are going to be in deep, deep shit. I'm going to put the link down below in the uh, description. Please read it. Uh, because this is not from my pocket, it is from a reliable source. So if you have taken a loan, if you have taken a credit card, and if you have run away, uh, once you come back to UAE, once you come back to the Middle East, you will be arrested. You will be really, really arrested. You will be in deep trouble. Okay, uh, so please be careful. Now it seems Samson that built Burj Khalifa will exit the Middle East market because it is not sure of the stable conditions in the GCC. He said some of them were my clients and he says I have lost a lot of friends who have been terminated since June 2018. Samsung will finish the Riyadh metro and after that it will not want to set up shop in the Middle East and it seems that Samsung has not got uh, any project in UAE for the last five years. Okay I just remember I remembered I spoke to this guy British guy uh, yeah I spoke to him this morning for two hours and I'm just going to go, uh, I just forgot to mention about him, but I'm going to tell you about him. And a very shocking story. Um, you know, I, 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 he told me to give his name. He told me to give his name. He is one of the top guys in the landscaping business. One of the top guys, British guys, one of the top names. And he gave me some bits of information, which I'm going to share with you. I hope I don't forget everything that he said. But number, you know, this is what he said. And it really shocked me. Number one is in Abu Dhabi, that is, he worked for landscaping business, the consultant, the contractors, the people in the construction industry, when they go to the government to approve jobs, the jobs which are approved are approved based on um, each person, each person, he has a share in a particular company, he has vested interest, he gets bribe of millions and that is why they approve certain contractors or consultants, which is very obvious, which I obviously know because I was working in the switchgear industry in Quick Electric and I used to personally, I used to personally pay bribes to guys in Abu Dhabi. I don't want to take the company's name. I don't want to take the person's name. I have personally given people bribes to approve projects. I've given consultants money to approve projects and it seems his manager used to literally get his whole house, um, whole house, everything uh, decked up again. He gave lots of names, lots of big names. Uh, I don't know whether I should take those names because they are very powerful companies, uh, landscaping companies, uh, contracting companies, construction companies and consultants. He has given specific names. The thing that shocked me the most, what he shared is when he was working for this um, landscaping company, he joined a guy, a Lebanese, Syrian, Palestinian, whatever mix. He called him a mongrel. A mongrel means dog. And I asked him, like, what happened? You sound pretty bitter. The guy, when he joined him for partnership, he literally cheated him off. He cheated him off of one year's salary. He didn't pay him one year's salary. He told him, we'll give you, we'll give you. So work on it. And this guy was left with absolutely nothing. He lost all his savings. 
and finally he had to literally beg so he begged you know because he had children and he had a wife to support so he took a check without any date without any amount as security he said that was a standard practice so i believed in being my partner and after he took uh, gave him some money like 10000 or 20000 dollars or whatever okay to help sustain but after the money ran out then this guy found out that uh, because business was not running well he tried to screw this guy over and when this guy wanted to get out of the country because he didn't have money to pay electricity he didn't have money to pay for food uh, he was back you know back on his loans and he had credit cards and everything else he said he wanted to uh, you know cancel and get his passport back the guy harassed him so badly so badly that finally you know when the pro came to take his signature on this thing he actually took a knife he took a knife and put it on his neck and said give me the fucking passport i'm going to fucking kill you i'm rephrasing but this is what he told me the guy gave me his passport but after that the guy tried to screw me again he tried to screw me he didn't want him to leave the country uh, he was able to you, you know uh, go to the ministry or whatever and um, finally they agreed for him to go but one of the incidents that he did share is american hospital of dubai i'm giving you the name american hospital of dubai uh when he wanted to treat his wife when she was pregnant with a the baby they allowed the baby to die in the womb american hospital of dubai why because they refused to accept him unless he had a credit card and he went to one of the government hospitals i can't remember which one the name he gave me but it seems in the government hospital when they had to remove the baby the dead baby from the womb um they had given the medicines she was just locked up in a dark room and this is the part that really shocked me really really shocked me it seems after they removed the baby the baby from the womb the fetus a cleaner put the fetus in a bag in a paper bag and he was standing there you know sad and crying because he didn't sleep the whole night and he gave him the paper bag and said here's your fetus your baby and he's saying you know his blood was boiling he was broken he was made to suffer for a year he went through all this torture and now he gave him a paper bag with his baby because obviously you know having the baby they have to uh, register they have to bury it they have to do everything proper as per procedure you know they have to give it a name they have to bury it they have to uh, register this so he's saying i just didn't know what to do and i'll tell you when i heard that i i felt as if someone took a knife and stabbed it in my heart because i have a wife i have a baby and i i couldn't imagine what he went through he's a very nice guy very genuine guy and uh, he said he he left he left uae and um, he never came back and today he's doing very well back in the uk it took him some time some of the wonderful words that he told me is once you leave your country and you go back when you come come back to your country you will not be you know made to Uh, you'll not be welcomed so easily it takes time for you to fit into the culture uh, people don't respect the the experience that you have in the middle east they just don't care because the standards are different in every country and he also faced unemployment and he also told me law you might think that whites or westerners don't work there a lot of westerners who do work in fact i got a comment it said law i'm pretty nifed that you consider westerners don't work so i don't mean all westerners and i I know a lot of westerners who do work I just give a general strategy because a general opinion because the majority do take advantage of the system just like Indians or Pakistanis or whatever so this is a guy who is to work 12 to 14 hours a day he explained his whole life story from the time the property market crashed to the disaster of the palm island to the disaster of the world uh, he he just like me he also admires dubai he also you know had his children that were born there and just like me he admires the vision of sheikh mohammed and he also shared some of the horror stories that he had with some of the arab locals not all and he said there are good arab locals there are not so good ones so it's you know it depends on your luck but he definitely hates those want to be emiratis or want to be arab locals who get a white passport and they think they can fuck up everything especially the ones who go abroad you know they are suffering torture and whatever in pakistan or iran or whatever and they go abroad and they they want to introduce the sharia law and say you need to change you need to respect us we are not going to shake hands because it is not part of our religion you have to bring in sharia law you have to 
you go to another country you respect its laws you don't ask them to change just because you believe in some celestial being so you know i'll tell you very powerful story very if he could write a book i would say i would be the first one to buy the book amazing human being amazing human being today is doing very well he's you know settled down and uh, i really wish i really wish he writes a book and you should read it but i'll tell you to have your own to ha- to for him to go through the suffering that he went through one year i i can relate to that because i also suffered to have his baby being given in a paper bag that and that also you know these hospitals i'll tell you be careful of the hospitals because i told you the hospitals in the middle east they're just out there they are a business they are there to make money they don't care whether you suffer you die they they amputate you whatever all the doctors are not bad understand once again all the doctors are not bad but there are majority of them who treat uh, the industry as business i've spoken to some doctors who cut open you know bodies and i i asked him don't you feel and like, oh, he said loy after some time it's just like cutting chicken or cutting meat you just get so used to it you become desensitized you you don't care so even if you chop someone's leg you just i'm sorry i chopped your leg if someone dies you you experience so many deaths oh he died so i'm telling you just please be careful please be careful if your anyone in your family is sick uh, these hospitals will make sure they'll make sure they squeeze every penny from you now the last if not the least the uh, the biggest shocker uh, that this emirati guy emirati arab local with those digits powerful digits he requested me not to reveal even his nickname not even a single digit of his number because he said he is very well known and um, i'll tell you i i was shocked so this is what he has said now these are his words word for word i took it down word for word okay he said loy you know this is shocking when i say this he actually appreciated he actually appreciated what i did the first thing what he did when he called me i thought he was going to threaten me or the same the first thing he did is loy as an arab as an emirati as a local i want to apologize i want to apologize on behalf of all the muslims on behalf of everyone for what you are going through the hate the bad words this is not what islam is all about this is not what emirati and i'll tell you i just wanted to hold him and hug him and tell him thank you my brother you know this is what a real emirati is this is what a real muslim is my mentor mohammad murad who is the ex head of dubai police okay he's an amazing human being I have never seen him threaten and I have never seen him do anything bad to anyone. He is a real Muslim. He is a real Emirati. And this guy, he told me like a brother, he said, "Your wife is like my sister, your daughter is like my daughter." He saying, "I apologize. I'm sorry." And I was shocked. I was like, "Wow," you know? And then he said, "Loy, but one thing is, I know what you're doing is good. I know what you're doing is to create awareness about the market, create awareness of the expat community. You're trying to help the people. He's saying we can't do this here, but you can do it. And he's saying a real Emirati, a real local, a real Muslim will not will not give you bad words, will not criticize. And this is the message to all the Muslims, all the Muslims, all the people who misunderstand Muslims or whatever. This is what a real Emirati is. This is what a real Muslim is. he said loy some of the information that you shared i have to correct you so that is why i called you just imagine he's calling me to correct me okay and i'm going to share with you what he said he said some people share information about dubai bank it is wrong dubai bank has been taken over from f a was taken over by fab for more than 10 years that is first abu dhabi bank okay it was taken 10 years ago i don't know why people are sharing this wrong information he said with regards to dubai bank okay uh, he said um, uh, the first gulf bank took over 10 years ago because because they could not provide loans the market was bad at that time uh, because of the market conditions they took over and merged it with first gulf bank okay 2 years ago first gulf bank and national bank of abu dhabi okay uh, because of what was happening in the market they decided to go in a new strategy and i'll tell you what the new strategy is he said there is also talks of three banks in abu dhabi union national bank al hilal bank and adcb bank of them that they will merge so union national bank al hilal bank and adcb bank they will merge this will result in a problem because many people will unproductive people will lose their jobs okay many many people will lose their jobs both locals as well as expats and he said the only bank that has refused to join is adib 
Okay, I think that's Abu Dhabi International Bank or something, ADIB. Okay, they didn't want to join with anyone else. ADIB took over Barclays retail customers because Barclays was not doing well. He said, so far, the information that I have is Standard Chartered Bank is not doing well. He's saying, uh, how I know this is because every day in the branch, he the branch that he works, I will not give his designation. He said, people walk in with their resumes, uh, even though they are supposed to do sales for their bank, they come and ask for jobs. And when I check their CVs, it is Standard Chartered employees who are visiting my branches, okay, and they are asking for jobs. It has been happening in all my branches. And he's saying, because of this news, Standard Chartered Bank is not doing well at all. And then he goes on to add that in the banking sector, there's going to be a new change. And the new change is going to be that um, they want to cut down costs so that banking can be profitable. So what they're going to do is, from now, banking is going to be promoted more online and more digitalized. So everything, it's going to be like, uh, instead of having three people or five people work, that five people is going to be in going to be done digitalized or going to be done in a kiosk. And uh, it seems most of the banks like Mashuk Bank and NBD, they're going to change digital or online. And the rest, it seems the back office and the operations are going to be sent to some third world country where experienced staff, talented staff will work for maybe one fourth or one fifth the salary. He's saying many of the departments and banks which are performing poorly have already been issued notices and uh, they'll have to find alternatives. So people with very high salaries, people who are not performing, people who are just sitting on their ass and thinking that they have a stable job, they're all going to lose jobs. He's saying before you just had to sit there and you'd get customers coming in and you could achieve your targets easily. Today, it's not the case. You have to go literally beg and plead. And he's saying ADIB has started this process a few months ago. And this project in the next three years will be totally transforming the entire UA. So if you're working in the banking industry, be careful. You might most probably end up losing your job because they will only keep the best. So if you're not the best, you will be unemployed. And last but not the least, he, he, he spent the next five minutes apologizing on behalf of all the Muslims, on behalf of Islam, on behalf of all the Emiratis. And I was really, really touched. So guys, this is the information that I want to share with you. And I'll tell you, it has been, it has been an incredible, an incredible like 24 hours. On one side, I've been getting these threats and uh, bad words and all that from some Arab guys or some. And then I have this guy. And by the way, he said all people who use uh, you know, threats and all that, they are immediately, if they are caught, they are going to be in deep trouble. So he spoke on behalf of all the Muslims, on on behalf of the Emiratis. Even I got these Pakistani Muslims who said, sorry, and I really appreciate, I deeply appreciate. So guys, this is the information that I'd like to share with you. Please, as usual, like I always tell you, please like the video, share the video with your friends. And yes, if you'd like to donate 5, 10, 15, 20 dollars, whatever, it helps me because you need to understand like, for example, this information that I shared with you, it took me the whole day. It took me the whole day. It's not easy reading 312 emails and messages. There are so many every single day. Plus, I have my personal life. Plus, I have to study. Plus, I have to, you know, serve my clients. So I'm doing this as a service for all of you. So please do support me in whatever way you can. I really appreciate. And like I told you, it's not to put Dubai down. It's to help people get jobs, educate them with what is happening in the market and, you know, share the news. So if you have any incidents, if you have anything, please share with me, but please make sure that you don't give misleading information. And if any one of you find any of the information that I've shared is wrong, uh, share it in the comment section below. I always read your comments. And as usual, uh, you can get in touch with me on my WhatsApp. The WhatsApp number is put down below. My email is put down below. You can send me any information at any point of time. This is Lloyd from LloydMesita.com, who's Lloyd Mesita and Think Personal Branding. Signing off for now. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.